what was the easiest thing to sort out in terms of just a setup and making living easy and what's been the most challenging? Uh, the easiest thing for me to do, again, with my engineering yeah. brain, is the design. You know, even though it sounds like so complicated, what are you going to do in such a small space? That was easy for me. That was fun. The challenging part came actually doing the work because of lack of time, lack of resources, lack of access to certain things. Like tools. Oh, yeah. La lack of physical strength after being hit by an 18 wheeler. Mm -hmm. Lack of knowledge of like basic carpentry. When I do have two hours to work on it, it's hot or it's very windy. All the things that get in the way. Uh, yeah, but I uh, I really enjoy doing it. Um, so I just came back to it and came back. So talk about when you've been traveling by yourself, how do you get past that? Oh my God, I'm alone. Uh, the first thing when I went to RTR with that VW, I was expecting to roll into the RTR and there's going to be a welcoming committee there saying, oh, welcome Lana. Here's your parking spot. Here's <laughs> what you do. The website did have the, the couple of spots where I should go. I GPS found it. I pull into this spot. There's lots of RVs. I'm like, yeah, I'm in the right spot. There's a guy there. I say, is this the RTR thing? And he goes, what? Oh no! I don't know what nothing about the RTI. Like, uh oh, what am I gonna do? Well, what else can I do? So you know, you go through all yeah, this. Yeah, scenario. It's getting dark. I found me a spot. It was close enough to the road where I can run over if something happened. I can run to the road and get help. I was close enough to the people where I could scream if something happened. I went to sleep. I woke up alive. And then it was like, oh, okay, well, I can do this. <laughs> kind of one of those things where when you're thinking, it's so much worse than when you're doing it. And we all go through it, right? I still do. But I'm getting much better at it. just stop. Just go to sleep. You it's, still go through that? Oh, yeah. I don't oh, know I that we ever totally get over it. If we do, that's great. I'll let you know if I know it just stops happening. But yeah, and, and depending on... The location or well i feel better now <laughs> what have you noticed about your life since you've been exploring this nomad lifestyle has it changed at all because you found this yes obsession coming from the corporate world uh there was always a need to hone in your elevator pitch so the the one thing that changed drastically when i come here no one asks me what I do for a living. Nobody gives me their elevator pitch. So I don't have to have a response. Things do come up. I mean, people, people talk about what they've done and, and stuff, but it's a conversation. It's never a pitch. It's never, let me see what I can use you for. I was, that's the one thing that comes to mind first. Now, the biggest thing, the biggest change or realization happened this morning, actually. Oh, yes. So I was in there trying to, you know, kind of piddling around, putting my bed up, certain things that I have to do and pull this up and roll that up. So after about 10 minutes of doing that, I went, you're not thinking about anything else. You are totally in the moment. Do you know how hard I've worked on finding a way to do mindfulness it has never worked for me ah. with, with my brain going like a mile a minute yeah. it's it's i i can't say it's hard it's not hard it's impossible for me to realize that it was like whoa <laughs> yeah. it just happened it and just of course happened. you know being with a stellar nomads out here that might have contributed to well that was you know that kind of feeds <laughs> off of the the, the previous uh yeah. conversation we had where I don't have to worry about the pitch. I don't have to worry about somebody else trying to sell me something. I, uh, uh, I don't have to worry about them looking my best. I could just come in every time I, I meet up with nomads, 
I am accepted just the way yeah. I am. I have never, ever felt uncomfortable. Oh, good job, Nomads. It is. Yes. Good job, Nomads. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> have you encountered stretches of either rain or wind or dust that you have to stay inside? What do you find to do when you find yourself in that kind of situation? The whole idea when I started thinking about this my whole idea was to find 70 degrees. Like it's 70 degrees somewhere. For me, the ability to move where it's better, it makes all the difference. Um, as a matter of fact, I was going to um, Florida and my daughter called me and said, hey, there's a hurricane coming. Don't come, wait it out. Because of the technology available to us, okay, I'm just gonna go find me a 70 degree spot and waited there for three Fantastic. days. Fantastic. Uh, but I have seen, uh, let's see, last week actually, I was here, it was really windy. Oh, well, I have time now to do my paperwork. I love cooking, but I could never take my time. It's always in the corporate world, you know, <laughs> yep, keep going. I can cook and I can slow actually down. slow down. I don't anticipate seeing three days in a row because if it's going to be for three days, I'm going to go. <laughs> Put the yeah. keys in the ignition.